Welcome back to Fusion Essentials video series. This video will be rather on the short side as we're just going to take a look at geometric constraints. By now, you probably don't have the home page showing up anymore. In fact, when you load Fusion, it probably just comes straight to a sketch. If not, though, you can always click New and get here. Let's go ahead and expand the data panel. And we see previous lessons. There's lesson one, there's lesson two. Let's go ahead and save and let's call this lesson three geometric constraints. And again, make sure that it is in the correct location. Click save. All right, we're going to go to sketch and we're going to click our typical XY plane or our front plane. And I'm going to draw a few shapes here and they're going to be randomized shapes. I'm going to start with a rectangle. There is no specific size on any of these. I'll draw two circles in there. Again, doesn't really matter what sizes those are. And we're going to take and we're going to draw three lines. And I drew the first line. I need to press escape and choose the line tool again because I want three separate lines. So I hit escape again. One more line. Okay. Now, this is what we need on our screen. So something like this. All right, now we're going to really make use of this constraints area up here. First, let's go ahead, though, and let's toggle our data panel so we can maximize that real estate. And you see a lot more of the geometric constraints showed up. Still, if you're on a small screen, you may have to click the down arrow to find some of the ones we're going to use today. Now, we are not going to go through every single one. We're just going to go through some that are used quite a bit. So first up is the coincident constraint. So if you're not seeing it, you can go to constraints and choose coincident. And I'm going to take the point of the rectangle, the corner, and I'm going to put it on the origin. So you notice it moves right on over there. Next up, I'm going to drag one of these circles inside the square. Now I can't drag it just right now because if you'll notice, my coincident is still plugged in or still clicked in. So I'm gonna press escape. Then I'm just gonna drag the center point of this circle somewhere inside the rectangle. I don't know if you noticed, but you see that little dashed line right there? Right now, I kinda of wanna avoid that because that's gonna to try to do the auto constraint and say, hey, you probably went that on the midpoint. So I'm just gonna kinda of leave it off of there. And let's zoom in. I'm gonna click out and now I'll click the tangent constraint. It's got a circle with a little line, so constraints and tangent. And I'm going to click tangent on the circle and then the, the rectangle. I'm going to do that all around. You see I'm clicking the circle and then all four sides of the square. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to take these lines, these two in particular. So I'm going to make sure I get out of tangent mode. I need to press escape on my keyboard. Here is the equal sign. So constraints and equal. And I'm going to make these two lines. Actually, you know what? While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and make all three lines equal. Now what I'll do is I'm going to take and use my coincident constraint again. I'll come over here and click the end point of this line and then this corner of the square. Now I'm going to use my horizontal vertical constraint and that's a very common one that we'll use horizontal vertical so constraints there's horizontal vertical so I'm going to click that right there and you notice it it did its thing now I'll take and I'm going to use a midpoint constraint so I'm going to click the triangle now the midpoint you might have to actually go to constraints and choose midpoint I'm going to click the end so the end of this line and I'm going to click this line I'm just going to put it right on the midpoint. Now you'll notice there's a couple things I could do here. If I want that to be completely horizontal, I certainly could use the horizontal con vertical constraint, but I can also, I can also say, you know what? Let's make this thing perpendicular. So here's the perpendicular constraint. Again, you may have to go to constraints and choose perpendicular. Click the line and click whatever you want it to be perpendicular to. All right, a couple more. I'm going to use midpoint again, and I'm going to click the end point here and this line, and that's going to be a midpoint. Now, I want this line and this line to be parallel. So I'm going to press escape to get out of the midpoint. Right here is parallel. 
So you could say constraints in parallel. And I'll say this line and this line should be parallel. And then two more. I'm going to press escape. I'm going to use concentric. Looks like a target almost. So constraints and choose concentric. I'm going to choose this circle and this circle. And now they share the same center point, making them concentric. All right. And finally, I want to lock these in place. So I'm going to go up to the lock. This is fix and unfix. But I can choose it from here, too. And what I'm going to do is just drag a box around all of that. And then I have locked that sketch in place. So this sketch is not going to move. And these are some of the geometric constraints that we'll use throughout the year. You can go ahead and let's click Finish Sketch. And let's make sure we save this. So this is just a little bit different than what we've done in previous videos where we've showed the physical properties. And in this particular case, we're going to show the teacher this sketch. All right. We'll see you in the next video.